Hello there. I'm John and welcome to our 344th live art tutorial where we host amazing art tutorials with artists from around the world. Uh, today we're travelling to England where we're going to be joining the amazing textile artist Katie Rundle to explore a collage sunset. Uh, these short classes are a prelude to Katie's longer two to three hour workshop webinar uh, that we'll be hosting in a few weeks time and gives you a taster of some of the things that you'll be learning if you sign up for the full event. Although you can just watch, maybe try stitching along as you'll tend to think of the right questions to ask when you're doing it rather than just watching it. So without further ado, let's zoom to Katie now. As we journey to England, you can find any reference photos and recommended art materials on our website. There's also a link to the class info in the description below. Um, if you want to watch other tutorials by Katie, simply visit our video library on our website and search by artist. There we go. It's looking quite sunny. I don't think it's quite as sunny as that at the moment. Hello, Katie. How are you? Hi. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Thanks, John. Good. It's been quite a long time since uh, since we last hosted you. How, how have things been keeping? Yeah, good. Thanks. It's been busy. A busy year. Lots been happening. Art shows and. Have you done like. any competitions of late? I I have recently entered um, an art competition which I have not done before, and I've been shortlisted, which is very exciting. Oh, oh which one's yeah. that? Tell us. Tell us. It's called. I think it's called the Women United Art Prize. It's quite it's a contemporary art prize. Okay. And um, yeah, it's it's one of the jurors on the prize um, is someone I follow on Instagram. She's sort of a business coach to artists, okay. and um, yeah, and she's a great curator of art. And I thought, why not give it a go? If you don't enter, yeah. you never know. <laughs> exactly. Well, you've made the shortlist, so that's yeah. the, that's the, a good first step. Well, I can't wait to get started. Uh, but before we do, a quick 30 second word on how today's live event will work. So first of all, we're going to walk through the preparation, which will probably include talking about um, some of the fabrics and the processes might even include the first collage layers. Um, then we're going to take a pause in the middle and hopefully look. In fact, I know we're going to look at um, the two pieces of work just behind Katie. Uh, we're going to have a look a little bit closer up at those and she can talk about those works. It's always uh, quite an inspirational thing that and we'll also talk about what we're going to be doing and exploring in the upcoming two to three hour workshop. Finally, we'll complete the tutorial, after which you're more than welcome to share what you've done on our Facebook page for comments and feedback from Katie. Um, now, before handing over to Katie, a quick word about Christmas. Uh, can you believe it's only a month away? I certainly can't. Well, it's just over a month, isn't it? Uh, with our art shop platform, we've been asked by a number of our patrons to make it easy to get one off Christmas cards printed with their artwork. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that we've done just that. Uh, so simply head over to the Shopkeep Arty gift shop. Link is in the description. And in addition to selecting cards with artwork from our professionals, you can also order a pack of 20 cards with your art printed on the front. You simply send us an email after checkout with a photo of your art and we take care of the rest. It doesn't have to be a painting. You could use a photo of a textile piece or a collage. It's entirely up to you. So if you like what you do today, maybe you'll choose that to make into some amazing gift cards. Just a thought. Anyhow, I'll get back to Katie and we'll make a start. Back with you, Katie. Right. Hi. Well, I think everyone received a, a list of the things that they would need if they want to yes, make one of do. these collages as we go along. So are we looking down now? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is, oh, it's the right way up. Great. This is the collage we're going to look at recreating. It won't be the same because we'll all have different fabrics probably. But what we're trying to create is a detail which will become part of a much bigger design when um, we do the three hour workshop in the future. But what, what this is capturing, hopefully you can see, is a, is a sunset really through the branches of a tree. And um, the reference photograph that I've used is this one, um, which is going to be the reference photo for the longer class. But we're just focusing in on where the sun is coming through the branches. And I don't know if you can see um, from where you are, but how the sun's rays sort of bleach out the branches in, in rays. Can you can you see that? 
that's what yes. I'm going to try and create that that effect with Stitch. Yeah, no, that's that's great. And yeah. could, would you mind holding up your um, your textile piece that you've got underneath that just a bit closer to the camera, just so that we can see a little bit on how. OK, yes, that's how you've done it with the stitching and it kind of comes yeah. leaks through. Yeah, yes. lovely. Yeah. OK, great. So to, to start this, we, we need just a, ba a base piece of fabric. And um, I've got a piece of calico, a square of calico in front of me. And the only reason you don't, this isn't essential, but what it does is it adds some stability when you start stitching, because obviously the stitching can sort of ruck up your fabric when, you, when you're using a sewing machine. So that's why I'm using a piece of calico, but it isn't necessary. You could, you could, if you wanted, just go straight in with your base colored piece of fabric. And I've got here sort of a batik, a splattery um, batik, which is, you know, it's, it's very um, inexpensive fabric and um, good fabric actually to start playing with um, if, you, if you don't want to invest in lots of sort of uh, more expensive quilting patterned fabrics. But um, when I choose a bit of background fabric and it's patterned, and I like pattern because it makes it a bit more random, a bit more interesting, I'm always looking at, well, which, which is going to be the best way up for this, for what I'm doing? And what I'm looking at in when I'm looking at these splatters is that there are, there are some darker patches um, on this side of the fabric. So I'm going to I'm going to make the darker area um, at the bottom of my piece. And then the, the, the light area, which is sort of in the middle, that will become the sort of area that I'm going to build the sunset. And we're going to build the, the sort of the, the oranges and reds in the sky and the sun before we put the branches on. So if you've got your base piece, you can either use yellow fabric or orange fabric really as a base um, square. And then, um, then let's move on to other fabrics that you might have around. I'm going to use um, oranges next. Um, I found this fabric scrap in my bag and it's similar to the scrap that I've actually used in the finished piece I've got here. And um, I'm looking at the pattern in the fabric and thinking these lines, it's actually a lotus leaf design, but these lines, I'm thinking I can probably incorporate that into sort of um, imaginary rays coming out from the sun. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably cut out a piece of this shape and use that as the base for me. But if you've got a darker color orange, perhaps you want to use as the background first because what we're going to do is we're going to build from the background up to the up to the sun itself so the sun will be the last piece that you put on and the sun will be obviously the brightest piece the white piece of fabric if you have any questions as i'm rambling on because as i say we will all have different fabrics um just let john know and he'll let me know and, and just to add to that, if you are new to this and you've not um, been with Shopkeep Arty before, uh, we use the Q&A button below. So press Q&A and you can either ask questions or make a comment and then I'll, I'll read those out to Katie at the appropriate moment. So you can see I've got, this is more of a pinky orange that I've got that I'm using there. And now I'm going to look at adding some sort of clouds. Um, and I've got this orangey, um, sort of circular design pattern. When, when you're choosing um, fabrics, I'm always thinking about what it is I'm trying to convey. And that sort of, um, that helps me with my choice of fabrics. So I've chosen here a fabric that's got sort of circular um, lines within it, circles and lines, because I'm thinking of, of the, the softness of clouds and the, the roundness of things. Uh, and so I wouldn't necessarily choose um, a fabric that had an angular pattern on it although that can still work. I recently did a class at a school where we used all kinds of random fabrics and some people used quite angular designs and it just gives a completely different look, very sort of contemporary. So don't be constrained by what you might have to hand. Um, just go, go with the flow, just try it and play really. That's what I would suggest. Play with the fabrics you have and uh, just see how they look. I quite often try try things out and then I might change them later. I might pull things in and out if I, if I think they work or they don't work. But um, here I am, I'm just cutting really random shapes, but long sort of cloud-like shape. You see there, it's very, uh, 
very loose in form and um, just following flows of lines. So I'm not drawing anything out. I'm doing it all sort of free form, if you like. So that's one yellow that I have. And obviously in a sunset sky, there might be, there might be several areas of um, cloud or different color that you might want to depict. So you can, uh, I'm gonna cut out another little strip. I have to be aware that time will fly by really fast, so I can't spend too long doing this. But look, if I put a couple of different bits, bits in. So far, I haven't stuck anything down with my iron. My, my fabric is all backed with um, Bonder web, so when I put a hot iron on, it will stick it down. But at the moment, while I'm still sort of working out where I want pieces, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to stick it quite yet. So I've got this other fabric, which is again quite, it's got lots of little circular designs, but it's much more, much lighter, more of a, a yellowy in the background, I suppose. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut um, a, a sort of circle size. So this in a way is going to be like the background to where the sun's going to be. So in a way that's going to be sort of the second brightness of the circle. So if you've got a couple of yellows and an orange fabric, you could have used, you could have used one of the yellows in the background and then an orange and then the second yellow on top and then the white in the middle. If, you, if you're fortunate like me that you're someone who does a lot of textiles and has loads of fabrics to hand, you might have loads of choices. I'm going to look at putting the sun on now and I've got this white fabric it's actually a sort of a spot um it's got a bit of shimmer to it um and I'm going to cut the the sun to the size of probably <clears throat> around the size of probably a 50p but you can do it to whatever size you like if you wanted to make a much bigger sun go for it there are no rules basically So that's going to be my son. I think I'm going to, I think I'm happy enough with that as a basis to work from. So I'm just going to get my hot iron and fuse everything in place. Oh. And to, to activate the bond web so that it holds everything in place, it's good to hold your iron on for five minutes, oh, five minutes, five seconds, and that, that should hold it. So it's a really, really simple design that we've done here. And um, what I didn't say, you might have put your sun anywhere on this. I like, I like to be slightly off center with where I put the sun because I, I think for a composition, it works best if it isn't in the middle. If you have put it in the middle, no worries at all. That, you can just make the branches more asymmetrical. So that's where I put mine. And I'm not gonna put the branches on yet. What I'm gonna do, because it's much easier to do the background stitching if we're going across a piece of fabric, it's, it's much, um, quicker and easier if I do that now because I'm then I'm not having to hop over branches which might be crossing the composition and we'll do the branches afterwards so I'm just going to pick up my sewing machine if you haven't done um, free motion stitching before you might want to just practice a bit um, on, a, on a scrap of fabric I'm going to have to move my uh, camera I think so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't know if that's going to work there. That might be good. Okay. So I've threaded up my machine in advance and I've just got a yellow thread in place. And I think I'm going to start in the middle of my sun and I'm going to do a spiral out from there. Can you see okay, I think? Yes, yes. I can, I can always lift it up so it's, afterwards. It's very orangey, but I, I think it'll be fine once we've uh, pulled it out yeah. into the daylight. Okay, there's no pedal gone under the table. 
Okay, so I'm going to just, I'm sorry about my machine, it probably needs um, a service, it's going to be quite noisy, but I'm going to spiral out to the centre here. I'm going to cut these um, tails off before I carry on. So you do need a free motion embroidery foot um, and to put the dogs down, which would normally feed your fabric through if you were sort of dressmaking or making anything else. A question from Francis, uh, is the thread 100% yeah. cotton or can we use embroidery thread? You can use whatever you like. I have no rules with thread. Mine is, uh, mine is cotton, yes, but I use, I use a whole variety of threads, different thicknesses. You know, it, I tend to go more with the color and whether I'm really trying to accent someone with something um, if I'm using a thicker thread. But I think thicker thread looks fantastic. I, I, I really like that. So just go for it. And if you don't have a free machine, if you want to do it by hand, obviously it's going to take you a lot longer to do it by hand, but it's a beautiful way to choose. It's going to spiral out the fabric. And if it does go wrong anywhere, you can just unpick it and redo it. It's now going to go out along some of these long pieces of fabric. Some bonder web on that bit so it's not. Nice. Following some of the patterns in the fabric pieces that I've got. as well as you fancy it. So as I say, absolutely no rules to this. Go wherever you fancy. And it's sort of no, it was a little bit difficult because it had some noise cancelling as the sewing machine was going. Uh, okay. And it could pick up that you were talking, but it wasn't very clear. Um, you were talking about uh, the colours that you can use and how you're, you're following. Were you following the sort of the perceived contours of the cloud as you were sort of doing the how, yeah. how were you deciding or you were just going with the the movement 
So I, I started off, like I say, from the centre of the sun and I just spiralled out from there and I spiralled out into the fabric beyond. And I could have quite happily just spiralled, continued to spiral out around these um, fabrics all the way. You could even you could even fill the square by just spiralling out and that would be a lovely effect. Mm. Um, but once I spiralled to the larger circle, I actually then went off on a little tangent and went on a little journey following these other pieces of fabric backwards and forth, doing again lines of um, stitching around those. And then when I hit the um, this piece of fabric that I have, I was, I was being um, led by the actual pattern. Um, so I did actually, in the end, I started going in and out um, in like a petal design with my stitching. Um, I don't think, I don't know if you can really see it on the screen, you can see but, it you can see yeah. it yeah but there's think, no there's like i say there's absolutely no rules to it it's whatever takes your fancy and i think taking the stitching out beyond the collage applique into the background can be really really effective and and look really really good so um just play is really what i would say and and see what works and if you do a line of stitch that you think oh that really doesn't look good which in fact I would probably say this outer stitch that I've put here because I haven't continued it it looks a bit random and a bit odd I would either want to continue that further out into the fabric or I would just unpick it and, um, and leave the sort of flower stitching that I've done here and sort of petal design mm. okay now, so now how the... are you doing Time. Jo Joe's asked a question. She said, um, "If sewing by hand, is it just a running stitch that you do?" Uh, recommend? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just just okay. a running stitch will work great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, how are you doing for time? Yeah. So I think probably now, before we get onto the tree, it's probably a good chance to have a little bit of a halfway pause. Would okay. you recommend? Yeah. Okay. Great. I'll take okay. my sewing machine. Um, so what a what a great start it's it's a fascinating we don't do many textile uh, classes on our platform and it's it's really nice it's a nice break to do something very different uh, or if you're tuning on in because that's all you do then I, I find it a fascinating uh, fascinating yeah. exercise and you can be really free and it's not with watercolor paints or oil paints yeah. you're being free with 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 thread and uh with movement and i think that's a really nice thing to do um so now we're going to take this opportunity to first of all have a little look at some of Katie's previous works of art and she's got a couple behind her um, and I'm hoping that she can uh, bring there we go this one hasn't got any glass in front of it so it should be a really nice I think it might be best should I do it on this screen yes or... yeah that, that could be good yeah because if I if I move it across we can see that actually the thing that we're doing at the moment is very similar to yes the just in the right top here. right yeah yeah so what I've done here, I've used, I've used again the same palette of colours and actually the same, the same patterns as well, because I've got a bit of the lotus leaf actually down here. So the sun itself is here. Yeah. And although you won't be able to see on the screen, I've actually used um silver thread so that it actually reflects the light. Oh wow. Um and it and um I've done a spiral out. And the spiral goes out across all these sort of strips of um other yellows and oranges the spiral comes out to about to this size actually it comes all the way down here so I've done a very large sort of spiral out but I've also done um, stitching going across the clouds so this is this is um, a landscape um, of somewhere in um, Somerset um, Cadbury um, Hillfort, Cadbury Castle, um, they walk up this steep hill and then you look down over this amazing landscape over, over fields and trees. And what I loved about the reference photo um, was sort of the reflection of the oranges of the sunset in the trees on the opposite corner, if you can see that, the diagonal in the opposite corner, was the sun sort of travelling through the trees. Um, and the fields, look, talking about... Um, the fabrics that I choose, I chose fabrics for the fields that represented um, the landscape itself. So this, this was a ploughed field with sort of lines. So I, I, I used um, fabrics that had lines um, and they were sort of going across the field in that diagonal way. And then the one below 
uh, again, um, was a ploughed field. So I've chosen fabrics that I think are representative of what I'm trying to convey. And then this, this large area in the middle was quite undulating land and that, that particular fabric I thought reflected it really well. And then I've used um, one of the fabrics I think I'm using today um, in, the, in the sky, I've used for sort of the hedgerow and then some darker fabric for the shadow that's the other side or where, well, where the road would be going up between those fields. It looks absolutely stunning. And um, before, I'd, I'd love to ask you where you source your fabrics from, but before we do that, um, Steph has got a question for you. She says, wow and super wow, is it hard to stitch on machine with, with silver and metallic thread? Um, it's just, it's a, for me, it's just sort of playing around with the tension on the machine um, to get a nice smooth, um, but yes, it is more tricky with metallic thread sometimes. They do, they do sometimes snap, but um, um, I don't tend to use them on very, you know, large extensive areas. So it's quite, um, yeah, I haven't really had a great deal of problem with it. And regarding sourcing your fabrics, do you, do you, do you just tend to, do you have any particular shops that you tend to go and visit re regularly or are you just always on the on the lookout for things as you're as you're passing by is, is it random or is it a bit more of an organized you know where to go well unfortunately because i would much prefer to um be able to support sort of local shops there there really aren't that many um i think dressmaking and the like has become so expensive in sort of recent years it, when i grew up it, it was the cheaper way to make clothing and and there were many more fabric shops um where i'm living now there are there's one in Salisbury, there's one in Andover, but they don't do all the fabrics that I particularly like. So I do buy an awful lot of my fabric online. I use um, Cotton Patch, it's a big quilting um, online um, website for cotton fabrics. And it has such an extensive range and does a lot of Kay Facet and Philip Jacobs, um, which are particular designs of fabric that I like. I love their use of colour. And as you can see, I use a lot of really bright colors um and it, i for a landscape like that it's, it's really amazing it, it kind of captures the undulating surface of the landscape doesn't it With, within the pattern of the fabric i know obviously you're doing your thread stitching as well which reinforces that but it is it, it's, it's, it's a, a great it's a very unusual effect and it works so well um, oh, I'm glad you think so. Thank no, you. it really, it really does. It's, uh, it's lovely. And I'm I sit, now. <laughs> I don't want you to pick up this thing for for a long period of time, but I am actually quite fascinated to see the other one as well. I don't know yeah. whether you're willing to pick that, the, the one that's hung on the back. Yeah. With a, are I, you able to show that or not really? Um, I could take my phone to it. Would that work? Um, okay. Is is your phone the one here? Yeah. Okay. Let's do Perfect. that. Yeah. Perfect. May as well take the opportunity while we've while we've got it. That'd be great. Okay, so um, on this one, um, you can see again my sort of there's a there's quite a lot of stitching involved. Are you getting much of a glare or anything? No. No, no, it's fine actually. So there was it's it's basically it's of a, a place called Lauterbrunnen, and a sort of a Swiss um, a Swiss mountainous valley. And there is a um, village called Lauterbrunnen at the bottom. Oh, lovely. But um, the person who commissioned the original of this um, wanted the church particularly to be in there. Um, it would have been in reality a tiny little speck, but um, <laughs> I, I, in, I've, I've enlarged it enormously so that it could become a feature in, in the piece of work. And right. then on the phone, it looked rather odd. So then I added some other buildings that are actually in Lauterbrunnen nearby, um, just to, to add that detail. Um, but I've used all kinds of fabrics, again, that I've chosen specifically to reflect um, the landscape. And so in this part here, there is um, quite jaggedy rock area. So I did use a fabric, it's a Liberty fabric that had um, quite angular design and then I've done quite a lot of dense um, zigzags of stitching into that um, and then it becomes into it comes out into more rolling hills so I'm using softer designs again you can see this circular design fabric in a different colour that I'm using today um, and then I've sort of cut out and appliqued 
bits from batik fabric and leaves from designs um, to represent some near trees. And then there's, there's this fabulous fabric, it's called um, shark's tooth with all these um, green triangles in, which I've used for the foreground to sort of represent grass and then yeah that's brilliant yeah so now, how, mu how much planning do you have to do with these compositions do, do, do you are, do you lay all the fabrics out on on your surface and then work out what's going to be in the distance what's going to be closer to the uh, yeah sort of yeah because obviously it's it's um it's the color and the tone of the fabrics important so these were sort of snow-capped mountains in the background so it's sort of softer blues and lilacs and um and um, you can't really tell, but a lot of this is a cabbage leaf print um, that I've taken little sections out of um, to build up the far off mountains. But yeah, when I'm, I mean, for this piece, there are so many different colors and different designs in. It sort of evolves as I go along. It's not, it's not planned as such, like you said, you know, I, I plan a section at a time, I suppose. And I'm looking at the scale of the pattern, the color of the pattern and the tone and then sort of building from there right. and these cliff these are sort of cliffs coming down that the pinks and the purples and there is a waterfall um uh, there's more than one but there's one specific waterfall that's near um Mount Broom in itself and again I used um silver thread in there so the original it sparkles and it's really lovely with the light on it Okay, yeah, sure. lovely, lovely. No, thank you so much for that. That was that's brilliant. That was that was amazing. Steph said stunning. Well, that, that was lovely. So, um, and let me know in the comments uh, what stood out to you about those paintings. What what really uh, appealed to you? Was it the colours? Was it the types of fabric choices? Um, it just uh, it'd be great to just let uh, Katie know. Um, also, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're loving the art on display today, we both really appreciate you hitting the thumbs up. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but then YouTube recommends the show to more people, which in turn helps with our mission to inspire more people to give art like this a try, young and old alike. So thanks in advance. Now, I'm going to go back to Katie and we're going to talk about what we've got planned for the longer workshop she showed you the photo at the beginning of the session and maybe we'll have a look at that and we'll, we'll show you what um what we've got planned so this is the photo isn't it the photo reference and yeah. um, we're obviously focusing on that little bit with the sun but you actually had a uh, a reference uh work that you did based on that didn't you do you do you yes. to have that this is the sort of thing that we're going to try and build in the three hour workshop so you can see we used i've used lots of different patterns in the sky but going back to the reference photograph i think it's lovely the way you go from a blue at the top of the sky into an orange at the bottom yeah and then we'll be looking at you know what what fabrics you choose because there's a, the colors become much softer into the distance so we're looking at the horizon there, we'll be looking at us using softer color fabrics there. Yeah. And then um, looking at the field in, in front, looking at how the colors of the sunset are actually reflected into the ground. So we'll be using oranges from the sky as well in the ground and mauves and purples in the ground. Um, and it's, it, it's just looking at how nature reflects the colors and how you can use the same palette in the sky and the ground often mm. um and the and the silhouette of the tree will come at the end as will the sort of the fence posts but the other lovely thing about this reference photograph is that where the shadows fall depending on where you put the sun and so you've got the shadows like rays from the sun in the in a way that they're dark so you, wherever you put the sun you'll then be looking at the angles of the shadows that are coming from it on those those fence posts and the tree trunk as well right so lots of different uh things that we're trying to yeah. create there it's going to be really fascinating and i'm wondering with with this because it does really depend on the fabrics that you choose on how you mm. put these things together in the collage now normally in a, a painting workshop that we hold um at the half time break we ask people to share their paintings that they've done up to that point for a bit of immediate mm. feedback from the artist and uh, they share it um online with us and i'm wondering whether we kick off the the workshop with maybe some photos of what fabrics people have collated yes, together yeah that you could then have a look at and give a little bit of immediate feedback to that um yeah. before we start the actual workshop because it'd be, yeah. it'd be good to get some 
viewpoints from you on what would make a good fabric for what part of that composition um won't yeah. take too long we could spend probably hours no. talking about it but i think yeah. i think we could try and do that over a few minutes so i think that would be a really so if if yeah. anyone joining the workshop uh wouldn't mind uh prior to the workshop just taking a photo of all the different pieces that you've collected for that workshop yes. um and then we can share that at the start and, and yeah. make, a, make a go of it so i'm glad you think that's a good idea yeah yeah and the most important thing for people in their choices is looking for that tonal variation so if everything is sort of bright it's more difficult to get the, the sort of the depth the idea of depth but yeah. if you can get sort of a lighter orange and a darker orange or you know in the same with the purples you know going for different tonal variation even if they're patterned yeah. and the easiest way to see if you've got tonal variation if you find that sort of quite a difficult concept if you've got lots of patterns which sometimes it is difficult to see is actually to take a picture and make it black and white in the edit and then you'll be able to see if you've got lighter going to darker or different vari variations in your patterns. That's a, yes, that's a good mm. good tip. Uh, ca cameras are real, phones are really good for doing that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Um, so it's happening on Tuesday, the sixth of December. Um, so it's a really nice pre-Christmas, an early Christmas present to yourself. Uh, at half past three in the afternoon UK time, um, and you can either to book, you can either click the YouTube pop-out link, which hopefully should appear just about here um, or you can visit our website shopkeeprt.com and on our events page you'll be able to find out uh, how to book in fact I can share my screen now and uh, show you how to do it so you visit our uh, upcoming art events um, the events tab at the top you scroll down you come to the uh, the date 6th of December and here you'll find out all the information the recommended materials etc etc and there's a link just there to click through to Katie's store and you can either book the uh, the webinar uh, ticket or there's one just for the video and if you go through to the webinar you can also select the webinar and the video as well add it to cart and check out and it is in pounds but depending on your currency your card issue will then convert it to your uh, local currency uh, and actually with the pound exchange rate at the moment it's not a bad time to purchase in pounds um, then if you do order the video come to our video li library at a, a, a later date um, not that one search by artist uh, go and search for uh, katie um and select her and then it will come up and then once we've got the video up there of this particular landscape that we're doing you'll be able to then go to the class info uh you can purchase it if you haven't done so already and watch it as many times as you want as a reminder if you're one of our patrons uh you automatically qualify for our workshop discount uh simply click the link on our website live events page and uh, you'll be able to see it from there right we'll go back i'm conscious of time yes. <laughs> i'm gonna go back to katie and uh i know i took the liberty of seeing that second paint uh, that second work of art but anyway it was yeah. worth it i think okay. uh, right back with you katie okay right um so we we go on to the branches now yes um, and as you can see here again then they're, they're sort of free form in a way but they're going from slightly thicker at the bottom of the piece to thinner towards the top so i'm just going to cut out um three strips that that taper slightly and they have slightly soft wavy edges um Again, you can do whatever you like as far as the shapes of branches, but um, that's how I'm going to convey them. I'm going to do them quite quickly. You might want to spend longer doing this than we've got today. And um, you can, you can spend plenty of time on it after, after us finishing up here, if you like. But I'm just going to do it quickly because I want to go into the stitching um, stitching of the sun rays into the branches. My dog's snoring now. I don't know if you'll hear that. We can't, we can't. No. <laughs> so I'm looking, obviously I don't want to cover where the sun is, but I want I want the branches near near to where where the sun is so that we can get that effect of the rays of light 
the rays of light from the sun sometimes can even obliterate parts of the branches. When you look at a photograph, the branches can actually disappear, which is quite interesting. So you could, you could actually use, um, you could use um, some of your orange fabric if you wanted to put some highlights into the branches themselves. I'm just going to show you with some stitching. So I'm going to, I think I'll, I don't know which one of these to use, which is thinner or thicker. That might be a bit thick. Just cut that off a little bit. So I'm doing this quite hastily. You might want to spend a bit longer getting the shapes that you want. But for now, I don't like the shape of that one. I'm going to cut it a little bit more. I don't know if any of you have used the pens that um, can disappear. You can use fabric pens um, that will disappear with water or just disappear over time. But if you need a guide for where you're going to stitch, if you're not, you know, if you're if you're not that familiar with free motion embroidery and you find the control a little bit difficult because it takes a bit of practice, you might want to mark on your um, mark on your your um, collage where you want to put the stitches. But if I just put a bit of tracing paper on top and give you an idea by putting the showing you where the sun is and where my branches are. You could spend some time planning out where you want your stitches if you like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch sort of like this in, um, in sections going through the branches that show how the light comes out from the sun across the wood. And at the moment, I've got stitching going like this through the sun and outside. And at the moment, I've only used yellow. But if I had more time to show you, I would actually use yellow and white. And I'd make these, um, these zigzag lines going out. I'd, I'd make those more dense against the branches um, that were nearest and then go out a bit wider as you went further away. So the effect, the effect fades, if you like, by being a bit more dense with stitching whites and yellows here. Anyway, I'm going to try and show you on the sewing machine now what I'm going to do. Yes, brilliant. Um, by the way, we had some comments from those uh, two pieces you showed earlier. Um, somebody said, wow, those two pieces are amazing. Uh, Steph said, Joe said, the different textures stood out to me. And Steph said, fabric choices must be key. It's like painting with fabric. Need a good stash yeah. of fabrics, I guess, to build up a picture that is so involved as the pictures Katie has shown us. I absolutely love how the landscape features are expressed by Katie's choice of fabrics. Oh, so thank a lovely you. comment. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, in some ways, yes, it's good to have loads and loads of different fabrics. But actually, I have found over time that it's really good for me to work with whatever fabrics I have. And obviously, that's easy for me to say now I've got loads. Mm -hmm. But when I first started off, I used to try and just work with the patterns that I had. And it's being creative with the patterns that you find you have, which is actually part of the puzzle and part of the fun. It's like looking through a pattern and seeing a little section. You think, oh, that will work in what I'm trying to convey here, um, rather than going out and buying the fabric sometimes for a specific project, um, I found it's sort of less fun in a way sometimes, but I, uh, maybe that's just me. But <laughs> so I'm going to have a go at this, uh, doing the sun rays coming through the branches now. I'm going to stick with the yellow thread um, for now. But as I say, I would actually use a lot of white as well because the the sun rays do really bleach out things you're probably not going to hear me so i'm going to do a bit of stitching as i was showing you on that tracing paper and then show you how it comes out okay
the scissors when we're done with them for that now. What I didn't do, which I would have done, <laughs> I might show you quickly what I would have done with the branches before doing this, had I had a bit more time. But anyway, let's just, I'm gonna re-thread now with a, a darker, a darker thread that goes more with the tree trunks. And just show you that I would have put a bit of texture into the tree, um, branches rather, before doing the sun. So I'm just going to show you that. I'm just going to do some wavy lines really up from some of the branches. I'm using quite a shiny polyester thread now, which I quite like. Um, nothing precious about this either. It's just going up and down. Have you got any patterns in your um, I like sort of a circular design. I think this fabric is called Aboriginal Dot. Ideally, you do this before you started doing your um, sun's rays, but I'm going to go over the top and actually it's not really noticing, it's fine. leave that there for now. Could spend longer doing more embroidery onto the tree branches if you wanted. I'm going to go back to my yellow thread. How long have we got John? Not long, a few minutes. Okay I'll just do another section of sunlight on the branch and then I'll stop and just show Brilliant. you. Brilliant. cut off my loose threads and then I can hopefully I can give you an idea of how you could progress this piece to show more of a, a sunset image. So a couple of questions that have come through. So Joe asked um, 
about Bondaweb. And yes. she said, is it double sided? Do you iron it on the back of the pieces you cut and then iron it onto the background as well? Yes, um, I've got a roll of it here. It's expensive to buy by the roll, but I use loads of it. So it looks like a tracing paper. On one side is the actual web, which feels sort of grainy. Um, and that's the side you put against the back of your fabric. And then you iron on the um, shiny side. You have to hold the iron in place for at least five seconds in each section to, um, to adhere it properly to the fabric. And then you peel off the paper from the back. And that's what I was using here, actually. I keep the paper that I peel off the back of the bond web and I use it for tracing paper. Oh, so okay. it has another, another use beyond. Yeah, because tracing the paper is quite expensive as well. <laughs> yeah, so that, yeah, so that it's perfect for that. Yeah. So just hang on to it for, for the tracing paper. Yeah, that's good. And uh, Francis asked, do you keep looking at your reference picture when you're stitching? Um, not, no. No, I don't. I, I mean, I sort of have an image in my, I mean, I do have it when I'm working on a large piece, I do usually have it as a still on my iPad screen and I will keep going back to it while I'm working. But once I'm stitching, um, I know in my mind's eye, I know what I'm trying to achieve and it's never going to be, I mean, in my mind, why would it be the same as the actual reference? So, yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. your interpretation of it. So it's just really what you want, what you want to try and convey with your stitches yes um, now, now if you had loads more time which yes. we don't have what yeah. would be what what would be the things that you would then what do you think would be uh, your next step uh, for, I, my for next step would really just to be doing more of these sections hmm. um as far as the light you know like i was showing on here if you yes. did a, a few sections of, of the zigzag lighter stitch coming away it'll give a it'll give um, quite a magical effect and and by stitching into the branches with the lighter thread if you actually if we go back to the one that I'd done before you can see I've done a few more lines of thread um, yeah. that gives more of the light effect and actually you can see I had appliqued on some lighter sort of curves of another fabric to show the highlights on the branches as well yeah, yeah. so you, yeah you can just play and I don't know if you can see the stitches that I did into the branches as well so ah, I went yes. down the branches with this shiny pinky thread yeah and then if you wanted to you know if you do a piece of work that you really like and you think you might want to put it on your wall then you can stretch it over a, an artist canvas and staple it on um yeah it's a really fascinating technique and really really mm. looking forward to the workshop i don't know how many of you out there um st stitched along as we were doing it today uh but if you did i would be love to see what you've done yeah. or if you decide Absolutely. to do it a bit later um then by all means uh in your own time then by all means uh share a photo of what you've done um yeah now if you've got any words of thanks that you'd like me to pass on to katie uh please write them down for me now um as we come to the close uh, and as i said uh, if you have got a photo of something that you'd like to share with us about this the post for the show is already on facebook so open your facebook on your phone scroll to the post uh, on the shopkeep arty page uh, and make a comment it'll be right at the top to be honest at the moment um and just add a comment uh, click the little camera icon and you'll, you'll be able to take a photo of your work uh, and then we'll all be able to see it have a look at what other people have done as well and give them a little thumbs mm. up and uh, a nice positive comment it's a, it's a good uh nice community thing that we've got going on mm. if you're on youtube don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel also uh, make sure you click the notifications bell when you do subscribe as it then notifies you when we launch a, uh, a new video with an artist right i'll go back to katie and read out some of your comments um, i've just folded in the edges sorry just to yeah so even when you've done something really fast like we have today it yeah. can look so effective once you just smarten up the edges yes it does yeah yeah, yeah. i'd be i'd be very happy with that <laughs> myself <laughs> to be honest um 
So uh, Sue said, thank you so much, Katie. Uh, Joe said, it's been great. I've wanted to have a go at something like this after seeing some of Katie's creations at an exhibition. I had no idea where to start. Well, that's, that's fantastic, Joe. Hopefully this will give you a bit of a catalyst for that. Uh, Francis said, thank you, John and Katie. I've loved every mini of it, minute of it. I did so along. So Francis, expectations oh, are high now. Looking forward to seeing a photo of that. Um, yes, please. And then you had another comment. Thank you so much, Katie. It was a great class. Um, and Steph said, didn't stitch along today, all set up for the next one, but definitely want to have a go before the full workshop. Already signed up. Lovely subject. Uh, thanks heaps for a truly inspiring workshop. Looking forward to the next. So uh, really lovely comments. Yes, uh, really, really lovely. So that brings us to the end of another show. Um, if you're signed up for the Howard Jones workshop that's starting in about half an hour so I'll see you there uh, over in Wales um, but until then obviously it's goodbye from me but first of all thank you so much for your time and generosity uh, it's really wonderful and inspiring to see you at work Katie thank you Katie thank you John I've really enjoyed it and I hope I'll see some of you well you virtually not really see you but at the, <laughs> at the three hour workshop that'd be fab yeah really looking forward to yeah. it and obviously you get a big round of applause <laughs> thank you and we'll finish on your uh what do you call it it's not painting your your, your creation your yeah, work textile creation yeah <laughs> yes yeah thanks everyone bye bye bye